Hey, great. Hi, everyone. Uh, good evening. Thank you for joining us uh, tonight. So we have two speakers. First, we have Ross Hyde, who, as I know, it was doing bioinformatics and now it's currently finding looking for a job and fixing a house. And secondly, we're going to have Lydia Speyer. So, um, Ross, over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, am I sharing again? Uh, share. Right. Am I visible? Yes, you are. Yeah, good. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, this talk um, uh, relates. Uh, I, I originally started working on it uh, for um, um, an, an R meeting in Newcastle that was supposed to be on just as lockdown started. Um, so what actually happened was I kind of shelved it and didn't really look at it until a couple of days ago. Um, uh, so if it's a bit rough, I apologize. But anyway, let's move on. So um, what I'm quite interested in is um, uh, I, I, I've got a couple of packages that I work on. So uh, Lintar, which Jim Hester wrote, and, and Dupree, which I wrote, which are like um, tools for analyzing our source code or for, you know, Lintar kind of checks formatting and things and Dupree finds duplications and things within code. Um, so I'm, qu I'm quite interested in the, the whole idea of um, um, analyzing source code as if it's data. Um, this is a kind of cartoon image of how a um, project typically uh, proceeds and th those projects that don't get shelved immediately. Um, so as we go from uh, a, a kind of newly minted project and add new, uh, you know, add a few new files and features and stuff to it, and then there may be additional kind of collaborators come on board and eventually it kind of grows and grows and grows and matures. What started as a very small project can can become pretty large, and associated with that, so long as you're, um, I, 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 I'm talking as if this is, relates to package development, but it, you know it's equivalent for kind of projects and things. Um, um, associated with the changes during over time um, are kind of Git commits and stuff, which um, whole, you know, uh, uh, um, the, the 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 Git repository for a for a for a package holds loads of information, which is pretty interesting. Um, so you can see how files changed over time. You can see which collaborators came in when and which files they changed and stuff like that. Um, uh, the more typical analysis tools that are used. Um, um, when analyzing code, it, it, it typically get partitioned off into static analysis and dynamic analysis. So, for example, Lintar, which I mentioned earlier on, um, this is a tool that goes through your source code but doesn't necessarily, um, um, you know, it, it doesn't run your code. It just checks your um, code against a kind of formatting requirement. Um, there's other tools, for example, Cyclocomp, which identifies kind of complex regions of the code that could probably be simplified. And, and there's a really cool thing called PackageNet, which, which identifies dependencies between different functions within your package. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to talk about these things in, in much detail today. And, and similarly, dynamic analysis, what these things do are you run your code, uh, sorry, these tools will run your code and analyze, you know, which functions get called when uh, or um, which lines of code are covered by the tests present in your package and stuff. Um, so there's lots of these tools already written and that work beautifully for, for R already. Um, the, the thing I was keen to talk about was something called behavioral code analysis, which um, I uh, first heard about 
from this book, um, which is mentioned um, here. So this is um, this is a book. It, it, it's it's kind of written for much larger scale projects than I've ever worked on. So, for example, the analysed things like you know the whole of Ruby and they analyze things like TensorFlow and stuff. And I'm kind of working on packages that have, you know, at most a couple of thousand lines of code. Um, but I think it's quite an interesting um, approach to analyzing source code. So what they do is they use the Git history to find um, uh, files that are changed much more frequently than others that might benefit where you know the functions or the classes within there may benefit from being split up into less highly coupled things or where when someone makes a commit and changes one file there whenever that particular file's changed there's another set of files that may be changed at the same time and there's kind of coupling between different files within a um a project that that could be um a, it may might make sense to split, you know, either bring them together or or, or re-engineer the, the the code as well. There's, they mention a tool called Code Scene for which there's like a, a free tier which you can use to analyze open source projects. But I'm, I I was quite keen to see how much of what that tool does I could do with what's already available in R. Um, so to do that. Um, I needed some Git repositories to analyze. So what I did was I took, I had a look at this um, this website. So this is a uh, similar to like the CRAN views for, you know, for um, statistical modeling and, and, and things like that. There's a CRAN task view for package development, which isn't actually hosted by CRAN. Um, and it mentions loads of different packages, you know, the, uh, things related to like dev tools and, and stuff like that, that, that are related to, you know, coding and, um, uh, and the development of packages for release for, for, for use by other R users. Um, at the end of this uh, um, web page, there's a list of different packages that are mentioned. Um, and um, I pulled out that list of packages to analyze and also analyzed the, um, the, the basically like the CRAN package database. This blog shows some um, source code that, that, that explains how to pull out the, um, the, the package database from CRAN and, you know, you can use that to find the GitHub hyperlinks for each of the packages and things, and also to find out which packages are still present on CRAN and stuff like that. So in this analysis, I've took a, those packages that are mentioned in that package development website that are present on CRAN at the moment and for which a GitHub repository is available. Um, and then I've cloned those packages down onto my local computer and analyze the code within them. Um, well, analyze the, the, the kind of git commits within them. Um, so to download um, and to, da to download a external repository to your local computer, there's a package called git to R, um, which you can use to, to, to clone to a local um, uh, file path. Um, there's another package that's not yet on CRAN. I don't even know whether it's in intended to be released to CRAN, um, called Gitsum, which um, I've used within the, the code. So for each of the packages I've downloaded, I've run um, this kind of Git summarizing um, pipeline on it. Um, so this first um, step adds a kind of a, a little file to each of the repositories that contains a kind of summary of the um, 
commits that were made, which files were modified, who modified them, and things like that. Then this second uh, little pipeline reads the contents of that file back into an R session and, and modifies it slightly and kind of converts it over to a, to a data frame um, that I can use in the rest of the analysis that I do. So within this, all I'm looking at is, is the, the packages within the R um, subdirectory of your package. Uh, so I'm not looking at things like tests or documentation or anything like that. Um, the packages that I've looked at, there's there's like 80 or so of them, um, and they differ quite widely in the um, size. So um, so this is at this end of the spectrum. There's things like Nitar and Shiny and DevTools and and whatnot, where there's you know tens of thousands of lines of code. Um, there's some packages that have you know only a hundred or so lines of code. Um, so this is just like a kind of illustration of the, the 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 variability that you see in the sizes of those packages. So these are all CRAN packages. Some of them have you know less than ten commits, and some of them have you know just a single contributor. Whereas at the other end of the spectrum, the kind of tidyverse end of this um, this figure. Um, there's, um, you know, thousands of commits and hundreds of contributors um, modifying Nitar, you know, through its through its lifetime. Um, so, so what I thought I'd do was pick out one of the more kind of complex packages from that. Um, uh, you, you know this set of set of packages, and see if I can generate some kind of figures related to how the Git histories change and things like that for it. So I looked at Shiny. I mean, it, initially I looked at Lintar, but it wasn't complicated enough. Um, this is uh, a, a, some a graph um, of for each file in the kind of in the R subdirectory of of Shiny. So that's the um, the files that kind of define the R functions that you'd call, you know, while while working with Shiny. Um, for each file within there, um, how many commits each of the contributors have made to Shiny? So you can see that um, Winston Chang and Joe Chang and, and, and various others have made the vast majority of the um, contributions to Shiny over its lifetime. Um, similarly, you, you can look at um, the, you know, the sizes of the files within that directory, and the number of commits that have been made to the files within that directory. And that's, I mean, that's all very interesting. But what I was quite keen to see was whether um, we could identify pairs of files that seem to be like tightly coupled within. Within here, that might be it. Might be interesting to see whether we could kind of um, uh, rethink the code within the you know. Anyway, so what I did, and I really apologise for this figure. I was trying to get TidyGraph to work, but I just couldn't install it at all today. Um, so this is using iGraph to plot out the um, pairs of files that are highly correlated within the Git history. So these are, uh, for example, here r slash timer dot r. That file is um, um, it's it's been modified by like twenty five commits over its lifetime. And um, the reason it's in this figure is that um, within those twenty five commits, thirteen of them. Uh, there was also a modification to this file, reactives.r, and in 17 of those commits, um, there was also a modification to shiny.r. So it's like when you modify timer.r, there's a 
there's a high chance that you're likely to be modifying these other two files at the same in a in a, a typical commit. So there may be um, it, there may be some aspect of reactives.r or shiny.r that might be worth pulling out into a separate file that um, that uh, that coalesces the, the the kind of function of timer and 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 the things that shiny depends on within timer or something like that um yeah I, there's there's a lot more stuff that i want to do with this data set so i've i've i actually originally downloaded all the uh repositories so that i could do kind of duplication detection between the the the, the source code the, the source files um uh, within each package, um, and I'm still kind of working on that because I think it'd be quite a, a, a nice blog post for um, related to my package degree. But um, anyway, yeah. So, so what this does, what this analysis has kind of shown, is that um, in addition to um, in addition to the kind of static analysis and the um, kind of benchmarking type profiling type uh, analysis of your source code you can also get a kind of some information about um, how a package is developing over time who you might want to speak to if you want to modify uh, particular files within a within a uh, an r package if, if you've got an idea that could expand someone's um, package for for, for, fu for the future there may be a, an individual who you want to speak to who who's worked with that file more than others or, or something anyway um, so yeah so um, can I show you a bit of the source code uh, or am I running a bit late sure, am I okay you'll have yeah, yeah. Um, okay cool um, so the um, I, I, I've yet to use things like Drake. A lot of my um, projects are run it by a kind of combination of, you know, um, um, Bash scripting and Python and R and stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of, um, uh, so a lot. Uh, so anyway, so I've got a bunch of kind of standalone scripts for analyzing it for. Um, identifying the packages that I want to download, cloning those packages um, for analyzing an individual package, and then for c combining the results from, analy from analyzing it, those individual packages together. Um, the code for cloning I showed in the um, the, the the presentation. Um, and then for analyzing, it's again, it's the same as in that presentation. Um, and then, so if I do that analysis, that um, I've pulled, um, kind of combined together all the tables for the individual packages into a single uh, table, which you can then look at here. So get some. Um, so the data as it comes down from. Um, from using git sum uh, looks like this. So for a given commit, so what's this? This first commit here covers three lines because three different files were modified within that commit. Um, you can get things like the author name, the uh, um, the, the the kind of commit message, and, and things like that. Um, so what else did I? So, yeah. So I'm. In, in the analysis, I'm looking at 81 different packages. And when you look across those packages, there's like 20 odd thousand commits. Um, so on average, there's about, there's, cause there's about 44,000 rows within this. Um, on average, there's a couple of files are being modified in each commit. Um, to, uh, Um, so, having um, done that, I can then 
kind of I can pull out the kind of la um, the number of commits and the uh, number of contributors and things like that from this by grouping on package and then counting the unique hashes and counting the unique um, authors. Um, that gives that, uh, oh, sorry, that gives that figure. Um, there's a variety of other things that I've done in here. I, I, I don't know. I, um, I, I think there's a lot that I can still do with this. And it's really, it's kind of a work in progress, really. Um, what I, what the, the, the main issue I had was that it was difficult to see kind of correlated changes between one package and another because the Git histories are distinct. Um, so what I'm going to try and do, and, and, and if you imagine, you know, if you're modifying R lang, um, which is a kind of, you know, uh, um, a, a, a pretty low level package which, which is used by things like the tidy, you know, the other parts of the tidyverse. If you're modifying that, then um, within a few weeks, you'd expect changes to be seen in any package that depends on our lang. So I'm quite interested in seeing things across packages, um, but I've yet to to look into that yet. Um, anyway, so these are the um, packages that are used in this talk, and I analyze Shiny. Um, and thanks for your attention. But yeah, it's a relatively brief bit of um, uh, of figures and, and whatnot. But yeah, cheers. Thank you, Russ. That was okay. very interesting. Um, I'm thinking maybe we take questions at the end after okay. the second talk. Um, um, if we do questions at the end, that will be after we've stopped the recording. Yeah, uh, I mean, questions typically are not recorded anyway. So. Okay. Well, right. in that case, yeah. we'll stop yeah. the recording. Yeah. Thanks for us again. Yeah, no problem, um, no problem. I shall stop the recording now because it doesn't want to be recorded. Oh, yes, please.